Well, I said I'd leave the best for last, and uh, here it is. To paraphrase uh, Bill Clinton, it's the reeds, stupid. Um, all manufacturers, aside from Suzuki, rivet their reeds to the reed plate. It's a technique um, dating back to the 19th century, and it's perfectly acceptable, except when you start looking at things on a microscopic level. Um, riveting involves steel pins being driven through holes in the reeds and the reed plates with considerable force and then crimped in place with friction pressure. Um, inevitably in this process small distortions occur and um, these can lead to tiny differences um, in how the reeds line up in the slots even within the same harmonica. Some will be perfectly true and lined up in the slots, others will be at a slight angle maybe this way or that way. That's why most manufacturers make the slots slightly wider than they need to be to cover these inherent imperfections in the riveting process. It means that even if a reed is slightly out of true, it'll still play quite well. Um, but it's not the optimum situation because um, the, with the tolerances being wider than they need to be, the reed doesn't respond to its fullest potential. Um, and that's why there's been such a huge demand for the, the work of the top customizers because um, with laborious handwork, um, they are able to um, you know, emboss the slots, do stuff to the reed, and close up these tolerances to the absolute minimum. And um, the result is that the harp just responds um, amazingly better than a stock out of the box um, model of you know, where it came from. Um, but the significant thing is that of all the major manufacturers, Suzuki is unique in not riveting, riveting its uh, reeds to the reed plates. Over the course of about 20 years, they've developed their own special spot welding technology, um, which means that their reeds are not fixed to the plates um, by arbitrary holes in the, um, the reeds and the reed plates and the distorting force of the riveting process. Um, with, the, with the welding process, Suzuki can float their reed to exactly the right spot on the reed plate, line it up with incredibly precise um, processes, and then when it's in exactly the right spot, then they fix it with the, with the spot weld. In the Manji, using innovative uh, high-tech processes developed partly in collaboration with a, um, a local university in the town of Hamamatsu, where Suzuki is based, um, Suzuki has now developed the accuracy of the reed fixing um, on the reed plate to unprecedented, unprecedented high levels. And the result is that the reed slot tolerances of the manji, which are so critical to high performance, are the closest and most accurate of any manufactured harmonica. And that's what's really revolutionary about this harp. Um, it represents the first true advancement in harmonica design and engineering um, in the area where it really matters uh, in over 110 years, and that's the reed slot tolerances. And the, re the result is that the harp just responds really amazingly well. Um, there's a beautiful sharp attack and um, a lovely sort of slightly slight metallic ring to the to the notes which is typical of a you know a customized harmonica <laughs> sweet tone um, but as I say with that lovely edge to it um, but it doesn't really end there Suzuki didn't just take their old reeds and um, just fix them more accurately in the slots with the manji they actually went back to first principles and examined the optimum length width um, of, of each reed um, for optimum uh, performance durability um, tone all these different factors um, with a special um, uh, special attention to the ability to overblow and overdraw the reeds. Um, I'm not an overblower myself so um, I won't embarrass myself um, beyond uh, just a cursory overblow to show you how it sounds. I mean I don't really have the technique but um, if I try that on, a, uh, on an average harp I'd, I'd probably get some sort of squealing sound or whatever. But anyway, we'll leave it to the expert overblowers, um, for instance, at um, next week's spa convention in uh, Sacramento um, to um, give their verdict on, on how the overblow, uh, how the, um, the manji overblows out of the box. 
But uh, my guess is that um, you know they're going to be pretty impressed. Um, another interesting um, sideline is that um, because the Munji's um, read slot tolerances are already so accurate, the raw materials are so good, this harp should really in, um, interest the um, the top customizers because um, basically, theoretically, with everything being so well lined up already, it should be easier to customize than a uh, than an average um, harp with um, with the uh, riveted reeds. And theoretically, again, this is just conjecture on my part, but um, extrapolating from that, um, I'd uh, I'd postulate that possibly the um, the manji could be taken to an even higher level of customization than has been previously achieved. Um, well, we'll just have to wait and see, uh, you know, what uh, happens on that, um, and it'll be interesting to to hear the opinions of um, players and customizers in the months ahead. For myself, um, the uh, the best way to get the the most out of the manji for me is to retune it to one of my own personal tunings and um, also half valve it, which is the configuration that I prefer. So um, I'm going to go away and uh, have some fun, do that, and um, I'll uh, end this uh, video with uh, some of my own playing in my own style on the Suzuki Manji M20. Thank <laughs> you.